on this rusting plaque on a common building in a residential neighborhood are the poignant words, the only witnesses to the tears shed and the goings on in here are these four walls and good Jesus. Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to another edition of Borders on Budgets. On this episode, we are at the Gestapo Museum in Krakow, Poland. And this inscription was made by an unknown prisoner. Much of Krakow was spared the destruction of World War II as city administrators quickly surrendered to the Nazis in September of 1939. For Nazi Germany, Krakow was not only important for its strategic value, but the Nazis wanted to turn the city into a new Aryan-only population. Because Krakow became an administrative center for the Nazis, this was where the Gestapo headquarters were located in the city. As the secret police, the Gestapo operated with near impunity when carrying out the Nazi regime policies. To rule with an iron fist over the occupied Polish citizenry, the Gestapo used any means necessary in order to obtain information. It was at the Gestapo headquarters where prisoners, usually local citizens who were working underground, the information was extracted from them, quite often under duress, and then their fates were unknown. As the headquarters for the Gestapo, this building was not only the interrogation center, but also a jail. In this underground room, there are three cells and a washroom. Concrete and almost nondescript, its description would in fact be bleak. As if the prisoners of the Gestapo knew of their impending fates, their lasting legacies are these inscriptions on the jail cell walls. What is surprising is how the prison guards allowed the prisoners to etch their thoughts onto the walls for a permanent legacy. The Germans uh, didn't care of this inscription. Most of people who were interrogated at this building after interrogation were sent to concentration camp like Auschwitz to places of mass execution. So they didn't care of this inscription and they left this. Here is interesting uh, drawing made by uh, a woman from Warsaw because it's extraordinary uh, drawing we have uh, there are not many drawings on the cells usually people left uh, scratch first names surnames dates when they were arrested interrogated she uh, made a drawing if the prisoners fates at the Gestapo headquarters were unknown most likely they were sent to a concentration camp. Nazi concentration camps and death camps killed over 12 million people over the course of 12 years, many of whom came in the final years of the war. After the Allied victory against the Nazis ended the Second World War and Germany's tyranny over Europe, Poland's liberation was short-lived as it was the Soviet Red Army who occupied the land quickly thereafter. The Gestapo Museum also recognizes those Poles who died at the hands of the communists between the period after World War II and the decade that followed. 
Many of the Poles who fought in the underground resistance to free their homeland from the Nazi occupation then found themselves under suspicion and as a threat to the occupying Soviets. And it was in show trials after the war that the Soviets condemned many of these Poles to death or hard labor in Siberia. Unquestionably, Poland has suffered for many years in the 20th century, and that is why this country remains cognizant and sensitive of its history. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Borders on Budgets. A reminder, Borders on Budgets, long distance hikes, slices of life, not a lot of money. From the Gestapo Museum in Krakow, Poland, I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. When I needed permission to film the Gestapo Museum and upon coming to this office, the gentleman, the older gentleman, came to the office at the same time as I did. In his nondescript beige folder, he has some documents and artifacts from the Second World War that he wants preserved permanently here at the museum. Więc to jest niemiecki z czasu wojny. And to this is ID, ID from uh, German occupation i, tak in 1941. Do, do wody. It's ID for, for Polish people. Matka została y, do więzienia zamknięta jako zakładniczka. Za działalność. His uh, husband was the member of the resistant uh, movement, the Home Army, and she was a hostage and he was arrested. The document connected with uh, registration, police registration, after she was released from uh, from prison, so-called uh, Helsluf prison. We talk about this woman. Jan's father during the war was part of the Polish underground government in connection with the Polish government in exile in London. To wykonała w tamtym czasie i to była taka dla niej taka wartość emocjonalna. Na pewno. To była kwestia na no, sposób zajęcia, uh. wypełnienia czasu. Wiadomo, jak, je, jak się żyje w celi więziennej. And during when she was in, pri in prison, she made this uh, embroidery uh, in prison. And so this embroidery has uh, much more than 70 years old. So. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Borders on Budgets from the Gestapo Museum in Krakow, Poland.